Megan was looking through her laptop for some place to live in New York. She knew that it would be very expensive, but she had to move for her new job. She was surprised, shocked and delighted when she saw that there seemed to be an apartment for rent very near where she was going to work. There were no photos of it, but she had to take a look, so that's exactly what she did. When she arrived at the apartment, there was a man opened the door and said to her, Hello, you must be Megan. My name is Andrew. Well, welcome to the apartment. You can have this for 4,500 a month. She couldn't believe what he just said, so she asked him did he mean $4,500, and he said yes. When she looked inside the apartment, she couldn't believe the size of it for a being in central New York and so reasonable. Megan was a pickpocket by choice. She didn't need the money, but she loved the thrill of it. She knew there were people who were kleptomaniacs, but she didn't consider herself one. She preferred to look at it as a cheap trill. She was down the road from her apartment in a really nice clothes shop and stole a beautiful dress for $1,300. She was buzzing walking down the street, but by the time she got back to her apartment, the buzz was gone. After a few weeks, Megan got to know Andrew. She went to his apartment, which was just across from hers, and they were drinking wine. She noticed that she saw all his apartment, every room bar one, and when she asked about it, Andrew told her that it was his mom who was sick and he was looking after her, and he preferred her not to be disturbed. One night, Megan walked into Andrew's apartment, and the TV was on. He was asleep on the sofa, and there was this weird horror on the TV, with a girl hanging from a ceiling. She coughed a little to wake Andrew. Andrew woke up with a start, and put the TV off, and said, Sorry, I was just watching some horror. Megan moved closer and went to kiss him, and sneaked the keys from his pocket. She was really determined to see what was in that room. She said to Andrew, Hey, I'm exhausted, could I just chill out here? But if you could grab a really nice bottle of wine I have in my fridge, I would really appreciate it so much. When Andrew left for her apartment, she quickly tried all the keys, until she got the right one and opened the door. She didn't want to wake his mom, but she had to have a look, as it all seemed very strange. She froze in horror when what she saw was a woman hanging from a wall. It looked familiar when it finally hit her that it wasn't a horror movie on Andrew's TV. He was watching a live feed of what was happening in this room, and he had a girl tied up hanging from the ceiling with blades on the floor underneath. She heard a noise and turned around to see Andrew holding a knife, and he said, Don't you know it's very bad to snoop around behind people's backs? Then Andrew stabbed Megan until she bled to death. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Sharon was walking down the street, sure that someone was following her. She didn't dare look behind, as she would rather just walk on and hopefully get to somewhere where there were people around, other than turn around and have someone attack her. It was getting dark, and she saw a train station across the road, so she walked across to it. When she got into the station, thankfully there were other people in the platform, but strangely, she didn't feel any bit safer. She thought about getting on a train, but decided to just wait by a group of people first to gather herself. She assumed it was just her paranoia, 
but there was something bothering her that she didn't know what it was. People were acting strange, and she had noticed there were police around. She had wondered why there was no train, as she was standing there for a few minutes now. There were lots of people looking down in the track, across a tape that said police line, do not cross. She didn't realize sooner, because she seemed to be in a daze, wondering why she was feeling so strange. She wondered what all the people were looking at, and when she walked over and looked down, she screamed with horror as she looked down at herself dead on the train line. She was screaming and screaming, but no one seemed to take any notice of her. She had then noticed someone had made eye contact with her, and they seemed to notice her. They walked over to her and said, Did you just realize you're like me, one of the dead? She spoke on. Don't worry, it gets better. I watch the news to see where there are local deaths. That way at least you can talk to someone. Sharon froze, taking in the words that the girl was telling her. Realizing she was dead. When Sarah was small, she used to always be afraid of the dark. She hated the dark even more now, and she hated her own shadow. It started when she was seven years old. Her and her twin sister were in their room, and they borrowed a horror book from their mom. Sarah was spooking her twin sister Katie out by pretending there was shadows going to get her and they were on the wall. Sarah realized that she could make shadows on the wall and spooked Katie out every time she turned around. Suddenly something fell and Katie got such a fright she backed back and fell off her bunk bed and out the top story window and was killed instantly. Fifteen years later, Sarah still gets flashbacks every time she sees her own shadow. She went to counselling and everything over it. She knew she had to get rid of her fear. She knew it was awful what happened, but she knew she had to finally put it behind her. She wasn't going to look at her shadow anymore. What Sarah couldn't see as she was walking down the street is her own shadow take out a knife. Suddenly she heard a voice saying, Don't you think you can outrun your shadow? Sarah was certain she had shook off her obsession of her shadow, but turned around because she knew that the voice was not in her head. She froze in horror because in all the years she just saw her shadow, not her shadow moving differently than her, and definitely not her shadow holding a knife. Suddenly the shadow lunged the knife into her and walked into her, then healed instantly and walked down the street. Katie was practicing walking down the street. Hi, my name is Sarah. Thanks for watching The Assassin Rapper, and if you enjoy the content then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of new content. Me and my husband were driving one night, I remember it well, as it was snowing heavily. 
We were driving through the snow, and it seemed to be getting heavier and heavier. I remember my husband saying, Hey sweetie, this snow is getting heavier and heavier. With that suddenly there was a screech, and the car skidded on black ice. The car toppled over, but luckily we both survived. We didn't even have to be hospitalised. A week later I was looking through getaway breaks, and I thought it a good idea to me and my husband leave our town for a week and go to stay in a cabin in the woods out in Utah. We drove there in a new car that my husband bought, because he needed a car to drive to work two miles from where we live. We were driving out to the woods for what seemed like days, but in reality was only hours. When we got there, we were in awe of how beautiful the cabin looked, with the trees surrounding it. It was just a beautiful sight. My husband stopped the car and turned off the engine. When we got out, he said, Did you hear that? I said, No. What is it? He smiled and he said, Absolutely beautiful silence. That night we had decided to go for a walk in the woods. My husband heard it first. There were footsteps behind us, but when we turned around, there was nothing. We walked on, then suddenly, I heard it this time. When we turned around, there was a person dressed in black, wearing a hoodie. I screamed, and my husband said, What the hell are you following us for? There was a man's voice. Let's play a game called The Hunt. It's kind of like a game of hide and seek on steroids, or maybe hide and seek on acid. I will give you a head start of 10 seconds to get the hell out of here, and after that I'm coming after ye with my gun, and I'm going to shoot ye both dead. We didn't bother ask any questions, and just ran and ran as fast as we could. As we were running down the road, I was counting down the seconds, and exactly when I reached ten, I heard running behind us. Suddenly there was a shot, and I fell to the ground in pain. Then the man shouted, This is no fun. Ye can at least make it a little hard for me. I'll tell ye what, I will give the bitch 60 seconds to recover and to get the hell out of here, and after that I'm coming to hunt ye down and shoot ye dead. My husband shouted at him, Get away, you crazy bastard! The man shouted back, Is it a wise idea to re- waste time like that. I eventually got up and put my arm around my husband, and after a minute we were just down the road a little bit, when my husband screamed as a bullet hit him right in the back of his leg. He buckled down in the ground in pain. The bullet had hit the back of his kneecap. I was screaming as the man walked right up to my husband. Then the man put the gun right to my head and said to my husband, Would you like me to kill your wife? Blood was pouring from my shoulder where I was shot. The man said to me, You have something to tell your husband, don't you? Something about the crash. I said to my husband, I was pregnant. Then the man said, Okay, tell him the real story. Then I turned to my husband and said, Those bullets that were shot at us. Well, I got shot by a red paint bullet, and you got shot with a real bullet. That's why I didn't feel pain getting shot, even though of course you thought I did. But you felt the pain. But that pain you're feeling isn't half as bad as when I lost my baby in the car you crashed. The man pointed the gun at my husband and said, My baby you killed. And he shot my husband in his head.